used a variety of lineups this year, but Kumaji will be in the middle. 76ers fans will recognize two-way player Mariel Shayok and assignment player Zaire Smith, who's been average and trim. The officials tonight at the Fieldhouse, Matt Calio, Claire Aubrey, and Nate Anderson. The 19 and 18 Blue Coats against the 16 and 22 Windy City Bulls. They're on a back-to-back. -back. They were down in Greensboro last night where they pulled out a three-point victory. Yeah, how about it? 110-107. Yep. And yep. we've mentioned how the Blue Coats have lost four in a row. These guys come in having won five, four of their last five. Here's Blossom game. Eight to shoot. Kumaji blocks Shitu right away. I love it when we talk about something and then, boom, it happens. Mariel Shayok to Xavier Munford, not on the same page as Kumaji. Now, Kumaji came out to set a pick for him, and I guess Munford thought he would stay on the low block. Tradarius McCallum working it around a Blossom game. February 5th was his first game with the Bulls in this building after being acquired in a trade. McCallum way short. Shayok pulls it in. It's good to see Zaire back out there. He played 30 minutes in the most recent game against the Herd, coming off the bench. 7 of 16 from the floor. And he's been increasing his minute totals with each game back. Munford can't connect and then trips up his teammate, Highsmith. They look to be all right. McCallum steps into a three, and we're still in search of the game's first bucket. Coach uh, Connor Johnson was talking about, you know, he didn't think they played poorly against Wisconsin. They just didn't play consistently through four quarters. Right. Two, the last two of the four-game losing streak, both at Wisconsin this past week. The G League leader in terms of wins with 30. And the floater goes for Justin Simon. The team didn't pull out any wins in Wisconsin, but former Herd player who just gave it up, Xavier Munford, had 51 points between the two games. How about it? His last game, I was looking at his, and he played 39 minutes in that game. He must like shooting in that arena. Yeah, he had 26. 25 on Tuesday off the bench. And and the 11 rebounds and the 7 assists. I mean, right. he was a little bit of everything in that most recent game. Definitely. Nine to shoot for the Blue Coats, who two minutes in are still without any points. Mariel Shayok, the team's leading scorer, gives it up for Highsmith. Now Munford, got to put it up, and a shot clock violation. Not a good start for Delaware. Matt, they look a little out of sync right now. I mean, you have the miscommunication between Munford and Kamaji on one of the previous plays. Now you have a little miscommunication between Highsmith and Munford on this most recent possession. You'd think coming home would help the losing streak, but they haven't particularly played well in this building this year. A couple games under 500 at home. Milton Doyle, now back with Simon, who has the game's lone bucket. Looking for four points, short, follows his own miss. It's going to be out on him, but he saves it. She too, intercepted by the Coats. And the presence of Kamaji definitely, after they saved it, like you don't go right up because there's the rim protector. And the Coats, another turnover. They're third already. Back to Simon, who can't finish acrobatically. Still without a bucket. Can Shayok change it? He can with the layup. It's a nice pass by uh, Highsmith to Shayok, who was cutting baseline. The first of the two Wisconsin games, Mariel Shayok went off with 33 points, 14 rebounds, and 7 assists. We mentioned Munford's strong play, but Shayok got going in that first one. Slow start for both teams. One of seven are the Bulls already from the field. Highsmith knocks down the three. Well, that's good to see because he was two of 12 in the last game, including one of six from three-point range. They give Shitu some room, and he missed it. One of five from three coming in. Two of those attempts came at 76ers Fieldhouse. He missed both. Shayok cashes in for the Coats. Yeah, this is good to see uh, the Blue Coats make some shots. They're now three of five from the floor. They only shot 39 and a half percent in that Wisconsin loss. Highsmith called for the game's first foul. 
Delaware's three of five from the field. Shayok's got two makes on both of his attempts. And Windy City just one of eight, including that last three-point attempt by their center, Shitu. Well, they put up the fewest points in the league. They really, the only category they rank high is steals. They get 11 steals per game. But they're really in the scoring and percentage categories. They don't do great. As we take a peek, going baseline, and he beat Mumford and then got fouled by Kamaji, who got him with the body. So Justin Simon going to the line. He has the lone points for Windy City thus far. One free throw for two points, and he misses. Kumaji hauls in Delaware's seventh rebound already in this one. Correcting the shot clock, which did not start when it was supposed to. Here's Zaire Smith, who hasn't taken, or he's taken one three already and missed. Kamaji so wants his basketball right now. There is no one near his height out there. <laughs> three to shoot. High Smith, the follow from Kumaji doesn't go. Another chance at it for the big fella. Doesn't get the roll. Doyle lobs it up. For Shitu for two. Yep, and Kamaji had to leave his man to come bring help. And as a result, that left his guy, Shitu, open. Five minutes in, teams feeling each other out. Mariel shayok has got four. Can't tack on. Kumaji, another offensive rebound for a moment. And it will stay with Delaware, last off of McCallum of the visitors. I like... Uh, Kamaji's energy right now. This is a lot of movement, a lot of uh, keeping balls batting around. We get set to resume play. Julian Washburn fresh into the game, and we are joined by Coach Jim Lynham. D, it's great to have him. I know you know him quite well. Joining the broadcast here on DETV. Coach Lynham, thanks for joining us as the coach struggling with turnovers in the early going here. Shayok knocks it away from Shitsu, but I understand you gave a pregame chalk talk to some season ticket members so what were the main takeaways from that chalk talk or something maybe you want to relay to us at this point I know you've done it in the past as well uh, yeah the, it's probably the third or fourth time that I had uh, chatted with uh, some of the season ticket holders uh, pregame you know they're like uh, fans everywhere you know they're interested in their team uh, they're interested in the NBA and uh, you know it just uh, it's kind of a treat to be able to uh, to share thoughts with people and hear what their thoughts are. Coach, I just have a question about, because we've seen Norvell Pell, who got his two-way contract converted by the Philadelphia 76ers. Shake Milton, in the absence of Ben Simmons, has now stepped into a starting point guard role, but he started out as a two-way guy also. Would you say, just looking at those two guys, that they're doing their job down here in terms of developing players? See, without question, uh, you know, going all the way back, you know, into my early years of coaching in the NBA, there was always a minor league. But to compare that minor league with this minor league, no, not even close. These teams are doing a tremendous job working with these young players in terms of developing skill sets that are directly applicable to the way the game is played on the NBA level. Various stops in your career, obviously, and I forgot to mention, obviously, spent time as the head coach and the general manager with the Philadelphia 76ers. When you talk about the G League, how important, you being a former coach, do you think running the same stuff as the Sixers is for these blue coats? Well, it's not so much, Matt, that, like running the same plays. It's more the idea of, uh, like, big picture. In other words, that, that you know the three-point shot, for example, is a big deal in the NBA. So when players are practicing, they have to develop three-point shooting if you're a perimeter player. It's that simple. Like running down on the fast break, and instead of getting inside the three line, you spot up outside the three line. That's a very fundamental thing in NBA basketball now. Sometimes fans don't, you know, maybe appreciate it or don't like it, that which is their opinion. But the fact of the matter is most NBA teams want the guys who are running the court to stay outside the three line, plain and simple. 
This guy holding the ball right now, Mario Shayok. Yeah, I know Shayok. Second rounder, definitely a scorer for sure. If you're a guy down here and you know he can score the ball, but if he goes up to be at the NBA level, probably isn't going to get the kind of minutes that he gets down here. What do you think is, like, the recommendation for a guy like him, how he could help himself to be? Hit on one of the difficult things, especially for young guys. Uh, I don't know if you saw Glenn Robinson, who was just traded to the Sixers. And, uh, you know, like maybe there was a little, uh, I'm going to use the word misunderstanding, uh, what his role will be. Well, essentially, the problem is he was playing close to 30 minutes a game at Golden State, and he's not going to get those minutes right. with the Sixers. Absolutely. So to your question with regard to Shayok, when a guy comes up, he's not going to be a 30-minute player on an NBA team coming from the G League in all probability. So you have to be able to do your thing in limited minutes. So, Which isn't always easy. No, it isn't. And you How have about to the be- big fella here for the Blue Coats? The new acquisition, Dennis Clifford, going and getting it. And one. Another seven footer joining the club. So, Jim, they've got three seven footers at their disposal. Connor Johnson does. What do you think about going with the, uh, the traditional big man down here in the G League? Well, I have no problem, uh, Matt, with one big guy. The problem is if you have two big guys, <laughs> because these other teams, unfortunately, uh, the, the teams tend to play smaller, and a second big guy has to find somebody to guard. And more often than not, this other team's going to have somebody he has to guard who's a three-point threat. And if you don't uh, have the ability to go out there and guard some, it's not. It's kind of what Al Horford has to do when he's playing with Embiid. Sure. sure. He's got to be able to find somebody on the other team he can guard. And we talk about Shayok as Justin Robinson knocks it down off the bench. The Coats up by eight. Shayok has seven of those 16 for the Blue Coats. Speaking with Jim Lynham, former Philadelphia 76ers head coach and general manager. Matt Murphy and D. Lynham with you here on DETV. Let's talk about the Sixers. They're going on the West Coast road trip. Four games beginning with a really tough one at the Clippers. And then they'll visit the Lakers as well. So in your experience, what are the challenges with that West Coast trip? Well, there's challenges just the fact minus that two all stars. Well, that's I was one say, challenge. Yeah, <laughs> that, that, that's not your players. So that this is a big challenge for the Sixers. And let's be honest, they've been had their struggles on the road all year long, even when they've had Ben and Joel Embiid. So that this is a big deal. This trip, there's no question about that. And as you said, Matt, the first game is with the Clippers, the second game with the Lakers. Right, you're starting with the tough you, opponents out there. Your first two out of the gate are, are, are two real challenges, right? If, in fact, you know, at some point you say, well, this is probably where you're going to be, the fourth or fifth seed for the Philadelphia 76ers. Home court would certainly bode well for them. That is, They have the best home record in the league. But that 4-5 matchup, generally speaking, is tough. Are well, they are they in trouble if that's how they have to start their their postseason? No, I wouldn't use the word trouble, D, but that it will be a challenge, yes. Uh, you know, Miami has played the Sixers pretty effectively this year. Miami has Jimmy Butler. And we'll hold that thought. We'll bring it back on the other side. Time out on the floor. We'll be right back on DETV. Blue Coats by eight. Better is like an understatement. They have the best home record in the NBA. Uh, but unfortunately, they're not even close to that on the road. And right now, if they were to start... Miami would have home court in that series. And I think they're going to play Miami in the first round, barring, you know, a a total turnaround or fall off the cliff by somebody. I don't think they can catch Boston. Boston's playing too well, and they have a big lead, a five-game, six-game lead in the loss column. So, yeah, I think it's Miami first round. The Sixers hopefully will be able to still garner a home court. All right, I have a quick question since uh, we're watching G League. Not so much as a coach, but you were a pretty good foul shooter when you played. (laughs) <laughs> if you had to go to the line and you're, say you got fouled on the three-point shot, you get one chance, it's equal to three points. You like the rule or you don't like the rule? Uh, again, <laughs> again I, I want to admit out front, I don't have big experience with it. You know, coaching, watching, what have you. My my sense, and we've talked about this in the past, no, I don't like it. Uh, I think it's kind of put too many eggs in one basket is how I'll just categorize it. Um, Do you appreciate, though, in the final two minutes, you do have to make if you get fouled, you got to make them all. Or yeah, they give you the opportunity. I got you. So the, the, the real uh, traditional play kicks in in the yep. last two. Correct. Yeah. Well, that, that would. If it's uh, a close game, I, that, that, that's. I, I would say that softens the blow. Uh, I guess I would ask uh, you know, anytime somebody. I'm not against change, but I don't want to hear a reason. You ready so, for it? Go ahead. To make the game 
fit in the two-hour window. Okay, well, people that are smarter than me, uh, if that cuts the time down and puts it in the two-hour window, then so be it. Uh, and uh, you, you just enlightened me. I didn't know that in the last two minutes, because uh, I definitely would not like it in the last two. Right. Uh, you know, a guy missing a foul Absol- shot right, right. and has the wherewithal to go knock the next two down. Come on. You're taking that opportunity <laughs> away from him. How about the coaches' challenge? So they've experimented with in the G League. Now it's in the NBA. What are your thoughts on the, the coach's ability to challenge plays? Yeah, uh, I have a good friend, and, in fact, he knows him, who works, uh, you know, in the replay center. And uh, he, he feels that... Uh, the coaches don't have enough experience with it yet. Uh, the only general thought would be, like, don't use it early. Uh, whatever, However important, let's say uh, a three-point field goal and, and a foul on the play, and you can wipe the whole thing out. So it's a four-point swing if you win your challenge. In the second quarter, don't even dream of using it because you can't anticipate what the, the end need of the game. would be right late in the game. So. Yep. The fact that you can have it in your pocket late, that is the most overriding factor. Blue Coats up by four. Final minute of this first quarter. Pretty good crowd here at 76ers Fieldhouse. We've got Jim Lynham, former 76ers head they coach see you, and GM. Coach. Are they all here for you? You've been here before, so what do you make of the game day experience here at the Fieldhouse? It's a intimate atmosphere but it's a it's a good when you pack it in the noise gets loud and it's a fun place yeah i know i'm a, i'm a fan and i mean that that's not because i'm sitting here in this seat with you guys as d knows my, my oldest grandson is on the clipper bench uh, out in california uh, uh, Aqua I, I was gonna okay say, uh, and uh, i saw so i've been out there to games uh, and uh, he was in greensboro before that so uh no i've been down here a number of times i'm a big fan not just in the style of play and what the players and coaches are doing, but the whole fan experience, as you say, Matt, I think uh, it's it's a terrific uh, opportunity. A lot of these people don't get or have the wherewithal, you know, to go down into Philadelphia to a Sixer game. So this is the next best thing. Uh, I'm just watching Chris Kamaji, and I know you haven't seen a lot of him, but I did tell you he's averaging four blocks a game. Right. You had Manute Bowl at one point. Like, when you – how would you identify legitimate – NBA shot blockers. I think Norvell Pell is that. Oh, no, there's no question. And you put me on Norvell Pell, you know, before I had actually seen him play the first time I came down when Norvell was here. And I said to you at the end of that night, I said, you're dead on. There's no question he's an NBA player. Because if you have a dominant skill, I say dominant, which Pell does to block a shot. Here's going to be a uh, one free throw that will count Uh for three. Right, right. You get to see it. Fouled shooting the three. How about it? Okay. So he goes to the line. Okay. Well, I'll tell you one thing. It's it make you make you concentrate and focus. That's for sure. (laughs) VJ Beecham out of Notre Dame, 84 percent at the line, but less than 20 attempts this year. He's supposed to make this then if he's an 84 percent shooter. And bingo, (laughs) (laughs) three points to take the lead, just like that. How about it? Ten seconds to go in the quarter. Interesting. So Chris Camaggi earlier this year had a triple-double with blocks. Wow. They were trying to get it to him there, but the Bulls, they don't get a shot off at the end of the quarter. Make one observation. He's a seven-foot, what, three or four guy. You ready? Right now his biggest offensive skill has to be a whole lot of scoring. Do you think that favors a team like Windy City, who is a good defensive club? I know we got a lot of basketball left. Well, neither team shot the ball well. Both were 8 of 22. What I didn't like is the fact that Delaware turned it over eight times. So to answer your question, does a favor? If you take care of the ball, right. you're, you're okay. You and just have to take care of the ball. Speaking about Windy City and their defensive strengths, they're the league leader in steals. Right. So over they have 11. five. Five in that quarter. Mariel Shayok has a game high, seven points, 76ers two-way player, contesting the Beecham shot. No good. Jerron Blossom game leading the way for Windy City with six first quarter points. Zaire Smith finds Shayok looking for double figures. It rattles home. Ten points for Shayok. Well, excellent ball movement, excellent spacing. High Smith out top to Zaire, and Zaire knew it all along that he was going to the corner to Shayok. Simon trying to get a roll of his own, and he does. Bulls back up by one. Again, the second night of a back-to-back on the road for Windy City. Kumaji contested, and they're saying it's Bulls basketball to his displeasure. 
Yeah, I'll be curious to see this on the replay. All right, so he rolls to the basket. He goes up. It's blocked. Yeah, his hand. He came back down with it with his right hand. He hasn't scored yet, but he had six rebounds. He has six rebounds already. And a block shot. Yep. Munford out there with Zaire Smith, Mariel Shayok, Haywood Highsmith, and Dennis Clifford, who is celebrating his birthday tonight. 28 years old, guarding Simon going in. And Simon follows his shot and misses. Clifford there again. He fouls him. Count it for Simon plus the foul. Yeah, and Clifford's now having a conversation with Mumford. We'll see, see how what happens. He obviously is trying to guard the smaller guy, try to go up and block it. And then he has to battle, definitely fouled him, battling to try to get position to pull down the rebound. Justin Simon with that three-point play becomes the Windy City leading scorer with eight points, has four rebounds as well in the early going. Three ball for Highsmith, his second, six points. Well, again, just good to see him making that outside shot. Zaire Smith, look out, and he throws it down. As we mentioned, Zaire's minutes are building back up when he hadn't been with the Blue Coats for a while. Last game in 30 minutes. Now he's back in the starting lineup tonight. I, I like his movement. He's quick to things. He obviously just got a steal on that last play. Had a steal in each of his last three games. Had 16 on Thursday night in a 120 conference and league leading Wisconsin herd. Windy City turns it over just their fifth. Delaware already has 10 turnovers just a couple minutes into this second quarter. Back to that last game, I had to do a double take. The fact that Wisconsin scored 47 points in that third quarter. It was a franchise record for them for points in a quarter. Yeah, at first when you're reading a box score, you say, hmm, I wonder if that's a misprint. That's <laughs> the one thing. I mean, when they played Wisconsin here in Delaware, Frank Mason didn't play, and he played well, oh this God, week, and he, he played play? well. 16 of 18 from the floor for 35 points. Former Naismith College Player of the Year at Kansas. He was a problem for the Blue Coats. You're right. I had forgotten he didn't play in that other one. Zaire Smith plus the foul. But you see what I'm saying about Zaire right now? Look how quick his movements are right now. Like a little hesitation and then just strong up at the hole. Look at that burst. I like that because I think the last game uh, he played here. Whoa. Cliff. Away from the Away from the, the bucket. Play. And Clifford might not want to be at the line right now. He just joined the Blue Coats. It's his third game, his first home game, and he's one for five at the stripe so far. Make it one for six. Blue Coats do have a one possession lead. Thomas Wilder with it off the bench. Justin Simon's been good early with eight points. Former St. John's player. Gives it up for VJ Beecham, who knocks it down. Munford fouled on the way in. And they're going to give him the continuation. Well, we'll take a peek. Munford crosses it over, splits the two defenders. And usually when you do that, they're reaching in. You can see it right there on the replay. So Munford with a chance at three the old-fashioned way. That was his first bucket of the game. Sixth year G League player. From Rhode Island, Blue Coats keep it alive for a moment. And the Bulls have numbers. Beecham to the cup for two. Pace picking up. Clifford and Highsmith not on the same page. I mean, that's not Kamaji. You can't throw that pass to Clifford. Simon to double figures with 10. Timeout. Delaware. The bucket for Simon gives the Bulls the lead back. Back and forth we go at 76ers Fieldhouse. And Mariel Shayok and Zaire Smith have looked good for the Coats, and they're out there. And we're seeing Washburn for the first time in this one. Mumford from long distance. Again, a lead change. 
Windy City took the first meeting on the back of Jerron Blossom game, who had a huge double-double with 26 points and 16 rebounds. Dixon, his second bucket. Well, with this lineup out there and Kamaji back, a little quicker, and Kamaji, I think, is a good trailer. See Shea driving baseline. We've seen him do that a couple of times today. Going up strong, he'll go to the line. The pace favors the Bluecoats if it does pick up. We say it all year, third in the league in pace. That first meeting, I say this because Windy City's one of six from three right now, D. They were draining threes. They made 18 threes here in Delaware. So that was a huge difference in that one. And so far, they haven't been able to find that shooting and touch. On, on the flip side of that, Delaware was 16 of 52. They had a, they struggled that day. And Mariel Shayok did not play. Correct. And the 52 seemed like a high number to me to be taken from behind the arc. Right. So it was a weird game all around. They will meet that's the at right, Windy that's the right City. That's phrase for that. It was a weird <laughs> game. A lot of things working against the Bluecoats in that one, which turned out to be a 114-103 Windy City victory earlier this month, February 5th. Shayok will take a seat. He has 12 to lead all scorers. Brownridge in for Delaware. Munford gets it to Zaire Smith, who has two buckets already. Munford guarded by Wilder. Steps in and hits. Well, we mentioned how Mumford was 11 of 19 in the last game, did a lot of heavy lifting in 39 minutes, and it seems to me he's picking up right where he left off. Beecham got behind the blue coats. Lost it up for Wilder. 10 to shoot for Windy City. Gets a pick from Shitu. Thomas Wilder out of Western Michigan finds Daniel Dixon, who at the end of the shot clock goes long. Eighth rebound for Kumaji. Brownridge so good with that pump fake. Knocks it down. He gets people to commit the flyby, like, religiously. Some people are okay with it, but he so sells that pump fake. Don't you have to respect his jumper with the numbers he's been putting up over the years? Obviously. Helps his pump fake percent. Uh, percentage, I'd say, of getting people to fall for it. Wilder step back. Kumaji with his ninth board still hasn't scored. You'll take those boards all day long, though. Here is Big Chris going in, looking for that bucket, but he's off the mark. Justin Simon with 10 to lead the way for the Bulls. Steps in. Another offensive rebound for Simon. Three ball for Beecham off the side of the backboard. Midway through this second quarter, Coates by seven. Zaire in and out. But it was contested, in fairness to Zaire. I mean, it doesn't mean that it's a bad shot, but Dixon was right there in his face. Windy City takes a timeout. Damian Cotter and his bench will talk it over. He has developed. You know, foul trouble used to be a big part or problem for him, I thought, at times early in the season. Uh, and he only has one personal foul now. And as you mentioned, it's about, you know, cleaning the glass. Picked up a block on that possession, but Blossom Gain gets the last laugh. He's got eight points and five rebounds, so a guy that this Bulls team has relied on heavily since he joined the club. It's his 11th game of the season with Windy City. Here he is trying to scoop it up. Good hustle from Zaire Smith. I mean, those kind of acquisitions, like Blossom Gain for them, Justin Robinson for the Bluecoats, to be able to, you know, get that kind right. of talent. Robinson right on cue. Especially in the playoff hunt. I know Windy City is a bit further back in the picture, but Delaware is right there for that final right. spot or two in the Eastern Conference playoffs. I know. I, I actually find myself checking the standings on a it, regular basis. Right. It would be the first appearance in Delaware franchise history, but they are in a little bit of a hole right now having lost four straight. So every game matters, and you got to get ones like tonight at home. 
They'll play 12 games in March. You get the extra day of February today, leap day. But they'll play six at home and six on the road in the month of March. That's the most games they'll play in a single month this entire season. Previous high was 10. Terry Harris. And look at Kamaji going on the offensive glass. I mean, he has at least six Oh, my. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Now, they... Windy City's upset because they're saying, how is this not over the back? I'll tell you how it's not over the back. Because he's so tall that he's grabbing it in the air, even though the, his guy is in front of him. You'll see him. I mean, there's it, that's they are fouling him by putting their body into him. He has the ball before it ever gets any near anybody else's hands. Brown Ridge sees a lane and a whistle before it makes its way out to Washburn. It's a foul on Shitsu. That's their fifth foul of this second quarter. Delaware only with one. Brown Ridge to the line for Delaware. Well, if you recall, it was kind of going back and forth between these two teams, meaning give a lead, get a lead. And now I believe it's a 13 to four run for the Bluecoats. Brownridge hits the one for two points. Shitsu trying to get two back. How about a 14th rebound for Chris Kumaji? That's unbelievable. And, and for people to know, like he has 14, the team has 27. He has half of them. Eight to shoot for Delaware in the home royal blue. Brownridge off the mark. Robinson the long board. Oh. Oh. Gets it back off Whoa. Kumaji. He threw the... And Kumaji <laughs> slams it home off of his 15th rebound. I think Kumaji's uh, fired up because, honestly, he hasn't touched the ball at the offensive end very often. Now, he's been rolling, but they haven't found him. Two points, 15 rebounds, a couple of blocks, 16 rebounds. His career high, well, season high, is 20 in the G League. Harris loses it. I asked Chris, what's the most rebounds he's ever had in a game? He said, AAU, he has no idea because the stats weren't really kept well. But 20 this season in the G League, he'd say, is the most he's had in his entire life. Rebounds in a game. He's got 16 here in the first half tonight. Well, you know how, like, uh, prop bets are so popular these days. Right about yep. now, if you want to make a prop bet <laughs> on uh, the over-under of his 20, I'd do it over. And there you see, personally, I thought I thought uh, she too was holding Brownridge. So Clifford and Highsmith come back on for the home team in blue. She too and Simon will take a seat for the visitors. Kumaji, one of the guys taking a seat for the blue coats. Well, he's had a heck of a 13 minutes on the court so far. 16 boards, a couple of blocks slam dunk on five field goal attempts and really his other field goal attempts came on trying to put it back after an offensive rebound Blossom game working on Brownridge and score it Blossom game averages 18 nine boards 26 year old out of Clemson Robinson with McCallum on him the lefty Finds Brownridge. He connects for three. Well, seven votes right now, which is vastly improved from the last time these guys met. And then staying with it right away was Highsmith. So the Blue Coats playing with some energy in this first half. They're up by 12, and they draw another foul. Yeah, you'll see this on the inbounds. I mean, that's just too casual. That's the, what you say to you guys. That's too casual. Highsmith steps into that passing lane, and now they commit the foul. The old sneak play. T.J. McConnell did that all the time. He was good for at least one of those a game. Two minutes to go in the half. Blue Coats have outscored Windy City 31-18 in this second quarter. Blossom game over Brownridge for three. 
Well, we mentioned how his game against these guys, he had 26. He has half of that already here in the first half in the second meeting. Robinson travels and some pushing and shoving with Calendret after the whistle. I saw Calendret give him a little bump. Robinson gave it back, and the officials will have to step in. Matt Calio's crew with Claire Aubrey and Nate Anderson. Definitely some contact between the two. So you're going to give them each a technical, which probably at this point, he gets called for the travel. Now you see the bump, the shove, the bump back. Calendret went first. Robinson responded. Perion Calendret, 24 years old out of Idaho. Played his college ball at Idaho. First-year G-leaguer who actually played high school basketball with Zach Levine in Washington State, a member of the Chicago Bulls. Milton Doyle's been quiet again against the Blue Coats. Jerron Blossom game has been active again against the Blue Coats. Back to Doyle. Leaning into Highsmith, no whistle, way off the mark. Well, he thought he was going to get Highsmith to leave his feet, and to Hayward's credit, he just left his hands up in the air. He didn't get him with the body, and it's an air ball. Milton Doyle struggled in this building last time, and he's had double figures in eight straight games since the last time he played Delaware, but he's got a goose egg here in the first half again. Strange. So take a peek. Robinson with the crossover, and then... Foul Very called on Doyle. Yeah. Highsmith. But again, they had come with a second defender, but if you come late, he's already in the middle of, you know, getting by. Now he's split and you're reaching in. Scoring has picked up for Delaware here in the second quarter. It was 19 18 Windy City after one quarter. Delaware scored 33 in this quarter. Calendret. Beecham well, for Doyle. The key, Matt, will be you have to sustain this in the second half. You cannot have one of those letdown third quarters, I call them, because you played well here in the second quarter. Slow start in terms of your shooting, the eight first quarter turnovers. You've corrected some of that. Clifford staying with it, rejected by Beecham. Three-second difference between the clocks and a technical foul. Shayok. Doyle. Oh, it's against Doyle. I, I thought the same thing because they both wear the number 35. Clearly he said something on the way back. I thought it was Shayok off the miss. Sometimes he has an extra word. Anybody who misses sometimes has an extra word. The interesting part was as he was walking to the line and thinking, he just gave you a T. Why are you going to the line? Regardless, Shayok's now two for two at the stripe. He's got 13 points, tied for a game high with Jerron Blossom game of Windy City. How about this? Now he's going with some twin towers here. Kamaji, look at how much taller Kamaji is than Clifford. Seven, three, Kumaji. I mean, it's but you, seven, I know four he's with seven, sneakers. Yeah, and I know Clifford he's a, seven one. I know he's a seven footer, but. It, it is significant when they're side by side. Three second difference between the clocks just to uh, clean things up. The technical was actually on eight, Jerron Blossom game. So the three and the five oh. making eight. It was on Windy City for sure. Beecham for three. No. And Shayok hauls it in. Three seconds. Mariel Shayok at the end of the half. Can't bank it home. But a strong second quarter from the Blue Coats. Very well played. They obviously picked up their score. Great two-man play. Zaire. Yeah, Mumford spotting him right away. Knew he was rolling and saw not a white jersey near him. Six points for Zaire Smith in the ball game. Doyle goes into Smith and Kumaji, recovered by Shitsu. Blossom game gives it up for Simon, who rolls the shot off. If you're Mariel Shayok and you see Kamaji has the rebound, don't try to go grab it away from him. <laughs> <laughs> they did give it to Kumaji with 17 boards. Oh, he did grab boards. it. Highsmith darting in. Tough pass, tough pass. Highsmith going baseline. I know he wants to share the ball with Kamaji, but 
kind of was a little low. You got to give it to him at least at his chest, if not higher. That was the 14th Blue Coats turnover. And Windy City has the second best defensive rating in the league. And they turned Delaware over 24 times to beat them the last time they met. So something to keep an eye on that turnover number. Well, the only thing I will say is that at halftime, that number, they had only scored eight points off of those 13 turns, which is a pretty good number. Sure. Well, good for the Blue Coats, I should say. If you're Windy City, you're not happy with that number at all. That's also good for the Blue Coats. Chris Kumaji's defense, Zaire Smith hanging on. Well, we mentioned how Zaire, last time out, 7 of 16, didn't have a lot of shot attempts in that first half, only four, and now he's picked it up with two field goals here in the, in the third quarter. Both buckets to extend the Blue Coats lead to what was 16. Doyle's first bucket cuts it to 14. Kumaji's follow didn't go, couldn't haul it in. Trade Arius McCallum. Well, they they needed a three to fall in a big way. Now three of 14 from behind the arc for Windy City. The officials stopped that one and pointed at the Windy City bench celebration, some type of warning from what it seemed. Delay of game warning, perhaps? And again, or just a delay of game? Now this time it's Shayok trying to do a shuffle pass to Kamaji, and I appreciate they want to get him involved because he wasn't offensively involved a lot. But there's back-to-back -to -back tough passes for Kamaji to handle. Shayok connects. 16 points for Shayok, matching his total from Thursday night on the road. And shooting a good percentage, 5 of 11 from the floor, 3 of 5 from 3. Averages 23 a game in the top five all year long in scoring in the league. But missed, and it's a foul on Windy City on Simi Shitsu. He basically tripped up Mumford as we take a peek. I think Shih Tzu felt like Mumford muscled him to get that rebound. Close call. That's a good entry pass. That Kamaji knows it's coming. He can go up with the jump hook that he so likes to shoot. Tuesday night, in addition to Shayok's 33 points, he tied a season high with seven assists and set a career high season high with 14 rebounds. Shih Tzu answers with a hook of his own. Shitsu now just two of eight from the floor. He has four points. One and done player at Vanderbilt a season ago. Justin Robinson. Virginia Tech product leans in and is fouled by Blossom Game. Yeah, he, he saw that he had Blossom Game off balance. He gets him to bite on the pump fake. There's Justin, and you'll see Blossom Game's kind of off balance, and then he goes up as soon as he thinks he's going for the step back jumper in the paint. Robinson had six first half points. Where he's a 63% free throw shooter in a blue coats uniform. Hits that one for two points. He becomes the fourth coat with eight points right now. Shitsu another missed field goal. Kumaji nearly another rebound. Shitsu staying with it. Wow. And Kumaji's going to get called for that personal foul. It's kind of a broken play. Let's take a peek. Because I thought Kumaji looked like he had control of the rebound, and then all of a sudden he didn't. Nice box out. He actually just jumped forward too much, lost the ball, and then commits the foul coming back to try to get involved in the play. Shitsu listed at 6'10", giving up a few inches to Kumaji. Not a good free throw shooter, but he knocks that one down. 55% coming in. That was his first tonight. And he commits a foul on the other end. That should be his fourth personal. I was going to say, he's uh, picking him up quick here. He'll make a sub. And here you'll see, he does go diving. Now Justin sells it, of course, but you can't reach across the guy's body. 
So she too comes out for Farrakhan Hall, the 29-year-old who split his college career between Memphis and Seton Hall. He's 6'8". Hall had two points in the first half. Blue Coats looking to increase their lead. Eight to shoot for Robinson. Highsmith for three. Oh, Kamaji. Kamaji playing volleyball in this second half so far. If you're just joining us, Chris Kumaji had 16 first half rebounds. He has two in the third quarter so far. His season high in his rookie year is 20 boards. Well, we see Terry Harris out here for the first time in this game. He was a starter the previous three. Had a good shooting night in the first Wisconsin game as Highsmith gives it to Kumaji, who's fouled in the first game against Wisconsin. Really looking to Kamaji a lot here in the third quarter. That pass was one he could handle. He does get fouled and will go to the line. And um, I'm assuming, you know, he has such a height advantage. You've mentioned already how with Hall now out there, that's 6'8 going against your 7'4". Our first quarter guest, Coach Jim Lina, mentioned teams going small and the benefits of having at least one big center like Kumaji, and it's paying off right now, but he couldn't hit that free throw. Seventh rebound for the guy with the basketball, Jerron Blossom game, who floats it home plus the foul. It's interesting. I felt like the whistle was a little late, but I did think it was a foul. You're going to see Kamaji come down on his arm after the release of the jump shot. Blossom game up to 15 points with those seven rebounds. Having a nice night. And he converts the three-point play. And now they're shooting 80% at the line. Windy City, not a great free throw shooting team. They shoot 68 as a group, 27th in the league ranking. Kumaji taking advantage of the size advantage. Yeah, Kumaji now has three made field goals. He's trying to get his 15th double-double of the season. He's got the rebounding category taken care of. Steal for Highsmith. Two on one with Zaire Smith, and Highsmith says, don't mind if I do. He definitely looked like he was taken off for sure. And in fairness, I think Zaire would have done it if he had the ball like that with one defender back. Take a look. Highsmith sees him, and then he says, forget about it. I got this. Take flight, Haywood. Timeout on the floor. We'll take it with them. The Bluecoats lead by 15. The end of a shot clock. Simon with his second three on four attempts. He's only 28% three-point shooter this year. Robinson trying to answer. Short. Rebound for Daniel Dixon. Blue Coats out rebounding Windy City 38 27. Simon can't hit from the same spot. Shayok with his third rebound. 16 points for Mariel to lead the Blue Coats, and he's tied for a game high with Jerron Blossom game of the Bulls. Over the head of Kumaji, recovered by Harris with half the shot clock gone. Over the head of Kumaji is tough to do. <laughs> Shayok from way downtown and somehow still put too much on it. Five to shoot. It didn't catch rim, so the shot clock didn't reset. Robinson at the end of the clock with the finish. And Kamaji is now one away from, rebound away from tying his season high. He has 19 to go with his six points. With so much time left in this game, he's got six points, like you said. And a block right there. Second of the game for him. He's been averaging four. Robinson into the lane again for two. Well, and, and, and it's fueled by the defense. You know, that block shot sends you going the other way at the pace that they like to play, and Justin Robinson finishes it off. Robinson with back-to-back -back buckets. Kumaji one rebound away from his season high. The Bluecoats up by 16.
job, not on that particular play, but defensively, I'll just go back to it, how they built this lead of 14. You know, they're holding Windy City to 36% shooting. Shayok, he got it. Shayok feeling it from behind the arc. He's got four made threes in this game and 19 points overall. More of a traditional Mariel Shayok game that we've become used to this year. Simon following his shot for two, give him 17. Yeah, the only so bowl to play in all 38 games so far. So the one they got Kamaji to get away from the basket and then the Simon was able to drive baseline and in that last possession, a putback. Brownridge for three. The blue coach showing they can do it in a lot of different ways. It's good balance. That's what, you know, when you attack the rim like they have, it opens up the outside for the shooters. Brownridge had five rebounds last time out. He picks up one there, his third. Robinson with the bullet pass to Washburn, who loses it. And it is Bulls basketball. Now that's the 16th turnover of the game for the Bluecoats, which is actually... Wilder with it. Now Dixon out there with Hall. But you, you see what they're doing. They're pulling Kamaju, now now actually Clifford. They're pulling them away from the basket to try to get these dribble drives. They've gone baseline now. This time they took it from top of the key. Blossom game in Beecham. The other two Windy City players out there. You mentioned Clifford back on for Delaware with Washburn, Shayok, Brownridge, and Munford. Here's Farrakhan Hall for three. Shayok with his fourth board. Blue Coats 19 and 18 as it's going the other way. I believe it's against Clifford. You'll see Shayok and he gets the moving screen. Clifford on blocking game. <laughs> kind of knew before it even happened his fourth foul for the new well, Blue Coat. And, and I think Matt Wood, he's, they're having a conversation, he and Shea, but his point is, you got to wait for me to go. You can't go until I set the screen. Otherwise, it is going to be moving. And a late whistle comes in. If it's on Clifford, it's his fifth. And it is. So, comes across his arm. I think he comes over because he thinks Mumford needs help. He tries to provide the weak side help, and he was a little late in... Do you think Connor Johnson will leave him out there to give Kumaji a rest for the final two minutes? There's nobody at the table right now, so Probably apparently. So I'm not going to let him come out and get his fourth in these final two minutes. Haven't seen Doral Moore yet tonight. He might. <laughs> that was one of the things that Connor Johnson said pregame. We needed that third big man so that we weren't fighting these situations of foul trouble late in games. And Clifford just fouled out of the game with two minutes left in the third. So he'll spend the rest of his 28th birthday on the bench. Clifford, his first game at 76ers Fieldhouse becomes a memorable one for the wrong reason. Well, I said that Connor Johnson wasn't coming back with Kamaji. He has no choice. Dennis Clifford, who wow. played his college ball at Boston College, was a G League All-Star with Santa Cruz, the Warriors affiliate, in 2017, has just fouled out of the game with four points. Three rebounds. In 11 minutes. And five personal fouls. I liked his numbers with Santa Cruz a couple years ago. 11 points. He shot 59% from the floor. And his numbers overseas as well. He played on an Alba Berlin team that's very well renowned in Germany. And he averaged just about similar numbers there. So a guy that has produced in various leagues. The Bluecoats turn it over for the 18th time. I know Shayok doesn't like the call, but he definitely traveled. He came to a jump stop, and then he changed his pivot foot. Yeah, he's trying to describe. <laughs> and, Still and, talking think, about yeah, it. Yeah, but the problem is, is the jump stop was not both feet landing at the same time. So one of them is an established pivot foot. 
and then he changed it. Wilder passes up the three. Beecham will take and hit. All right, the, right about now, they need to just calm down, they be in the blue coats, and close this quarter out properly. Beecham the third, Bulls player to double figures with 10. Washburn for three. He connects. It's one of the things you love about Washburn, he doesn't shoot a ton, but if given the opportunity, he's a good three-point shooter. He actually, by percentage, is the team's leader Correct. in three-point shooting. He just shooting. hasn't shot a lot of them, which I think is the reason I don't think you see him in the league category for that. He knocks that one down. He's 12 of 25 from beyond the arc over the last five games. And it was a delay of game on the Blue Coats. Beecham hits the free throw on the technical. And the Bulls will retain possession with Haywood Highsmith and Zaire Smith, a very good defensive duo coming back on the floor for the home team. Blue Coats led 52-40 at the half. Well, it's their second consecutive 30-point quarter, which after the slow start where they had 18 first quarter points is nice to see. Blossom game with a big time put back. And again, where was Kamaji? He was out because he had been pulled away from the rim. Final minute of this third quarter. And what happens, Matt, because he had been cleaning the glass so well, other guys kind of get lulled to sleep. In, in, in that case, they have to get that rebound. Smith working on Hall. Leaning in, short. Out of the reach of Kumaji, who's still one rebound away from a season-high 20. 40 seconds to go. Wilder for three. Wow. So I'm going to guess that this is on Zaire. On the box out. Oh, no. Mumford. Let's check it out. Yeah. Mumford is. It looked like Zaire to us. Kind seems, of tied seems up kind of, the arm. Yeah. I, I, if I'm Mumford, I'd say, where? I didn't even touch that guy. <laughs> <laughs> Blossom game at the line. He's got a team high 18. One free throw worth two points. Give him 20 points. This quarter favors Windy City right about now. I mean, they have it down to 10, which if you're them, I think you think is whistling for the turn uh, the traveling to make it a turnover. I thought for a second Kumaji might try to throw that in again from okay. way out. One, two, eh, it's like two and a half. I mean, I know anymore. Don't you think on the Euro steps it yeah. looks just like that? Nothing clear cut per no. se on that one, but maybe you stand out a little bit more when you're 7-4 exactly. and putting the ball on the And the ground the that he covers with those two steps. Right. And he's backing off Wilder. Chris Kumaji with a six-second difference between shot and game clock. The point guard, Wilder, being dared to shoot. And he will. Off the mark. Blossom game fighting for it with Munford. And it's last off of Munford. Windy City ball with 7.1 left in the frame. I mean, but seriously, if you look and look at Kumaji and everybody else on the court is significantly smaller. He's left to have to guard somebody. <laughs> Wilder at 6-3 will inbound. Dixon's three, long. There's the 20th board to tie a season high for Kumaji. Highsmith at the end of the quarter, way too strong. So we've got a 10-point game going to the fourth. Blue Coats 82, the Windy City Bulls 72, DETV and Twitch. Drills another three, Blue Coats by 13. Yeah, I, I like the, uh, they're shooting from behind the arc. They're good three-pointed. Munford wrestling with Hall and gets called for the personal. And here you see, I mean, that's a little bit of a mismatch in my opinion. Sure. I mean, it's a tough 
low post guard for Mumford. 6-3, guarding 6-8. And it would appear to me that they, the physicality of Hall, you know, they don't want Kamaji to get involved in that because of his three personal fouls. Highsmith trying to contain Blossom game, and he stuffs him. Brownridge comes away with it. To the cup for two. That's great. Highsmith had a heck of a block to start that fast break and a strong finish we got by a, Brownridge. A brief shot of the Bluecoats bench celebrating. Dixon puts a uh, quick stop to the celebration with a three. I, but I feel like they've picked it up from behind the arc. I mean, they only have six of 27, but four of those have come in the second half. Make it 20 turnovers. Blossom game, who has 20 points, spins and scores. Now, the defense have, has fallen off from what Delaware had in that second and the beginning of the third. Back to a 10-point margin. Coates led by 12 at halftime. Smith. Brown Ridge. Buckets. Yeah, you can just see it. He and Shayok, the either of them, when they get get it going, you can just see in the release that that's going down. That's going down. Five of seven for Jared Brownridge, who was seven of sixteen for three the last time these two teams met. I like this. I mean, this has worked out well these last couple of possessions with Kamaji on Wilder and Zaire battling with Hall. And again, because Zaire's not afraid to, you know, he's not afraid to mix it up, be, be physical back. Offensively, Zaire with eight points to match his jersey number in the G League. Four blue coats are in double figures, led by Shayok and Brownridge with 19 each. Here's Brownridge. Robinson, another guy in double figures with 12. Eight to shoot for Jarrett. Four to shoot. High Smith for three. Stop the ball. Too easy to get it inside. So an excellent entry pass by Wilder. But there, you'll see it. Look how empty. I mean, he's on the low block, and he threw it from just over half court because there was no other blue coat there. Blossom game does his best work inside the arcs. So they've been trying to feed it into him. He's struggled shooting recently. Is one of two from three in this one. 22 points. Another whistle. And it's a Blue Coats timeout. So they'll talk it over up by 13. Just under nine and a half to go in regulation. That one bounced around into the hands of Blossom Game, who's a rebound away now from a double-double. And the shot goes for Dixon, plus the foul. Well, you'll see, he got a Euro step coming up here, and then he comes back to his strong side. And Justin Robinson was moving the other way. Daniel Dixon... Looking to get the margin back to 10, and he does cut the deficit to 10. Dixon with 13 off the bench, only averages 3.5 points per game. It's a lot of time still to play in this game. I mean, just a hair under 9 minutes. 10 is a manageable number. Yeah, this one's a long way from being done, being over. Doyle called for his third personal. That's 
Windy City's first of the quarter. Zaire Smith, long. Wow, that's a big turnover by Blossom game right there. Robinson steps in and buries it. And Blossom game gave it up on that last possession when he's been able to dribble drive to the hole. That went the other way for a fast break bucket. Damian Cotter and the Windy City Bulls take a timeout after the Robinson triple. Bulls pay. 17 for Justin Robinson, who's looked good tonight. Doyle wants the mismatch on Clifford. Steps back. Misfires, but it's tipped home by Blossom Game. Double-double for him. He's got 26 points. And that would have been his 11th rebound. Unless it was tipped home by Washburn. And they do give it a Blossom game. 26 and 11 is correct. It's comparable to, to his game that he had here on February 5th as Zaire gets high to slam the one-handed jam. And he hurt his wrist on that play. He's holding his wrist. Hit it on the rim. We'll have to take another look at that one. You're right, he is. He's holding the, the right wrist. It's a hazard of the job. <laughs> it was like a dunk contest dunk. No one near him. Really exaggerated the finish. Brown Ridge with the stutter step. Puts it up and puts it in. Well, we've seen that when Brown Ridge makes his threes. Now you have to go out and honor him, and he's smart enough of a basketball player. He knows how to take you off the dribble. So he had 21 in the first meeting against Windy City. He's an Aurora, Illinois native, and he has 21 right now. Clifford has the rebound. Washburn. Knockdown. And that's the kind of time he had to knock down his first three-pointer that was in the corner in the third. He has a nice stroke. So consistent. Picks and chooses his spots, two of three from deep. Beecham's had a good night. He hits another three. V.J. Beecham, it's his second, but he's got 14 points off the bench. But look how quickly... The Blue Coats pushed the pace even after a made field goal. Brown Ridge was about to uh, get to the paint and at least score a layup before he was tripped up. Hall will take a seat for Coach Cotter. Kumaji back on for Clifford for the home team. Six points, 20 rebounds. His next would be a career high in his rookie season. 16 of the 20 came in the first half. The Blue Coats had a 52-40 halftime lead. Kumaji staying with it and punching it home. Well, Sneak guess. play for Washburn, but he lost it. Shayok not let in as a sub. So it's Washburn pressuring Brown Ridge, Robinson, Smith, and Kumaji back for the Blue Coats. Simon out there directing the offense with Doyle, Blossom Game, Dixon, and BJ Beecham. And Kuma Kumaji's eye in Simon. That's his guy. That's the block <laughs> shot. Kumaji with three blocks in this game. Kumaji guarding a lot of guards in this smaller Windy City lineup, and he comes down with it and then throws it down, plus the foul. 
So he has his 15th double-double of the season. He has three block shots. He couldn't just put this home, and he wisely, when he realized he couldn't, he comes down, but he stays strong with it. Chris Kumaji, 23 years old from Florida State. 10 points, a season-high 21 rebounds. Chance at a three-point play here. And he sinks it. It's an impressive performance. I mean, he's 5 of 10 from the floor. After starting, 1 for five. Oh, 5. Yeah, I think he was 1 for 5. Simon had a hot start. He can't finish there. He's got 17 points. And Kamaji now is 22. You said 25. I think you're going to be close to the number. <laughs> he would have... Uh, Brought the house down. He still gets the points. They love this guy. Well, I mean, first of all, his energy and his effort, right? He's a pretty fiery guy, too. Like, he doesn't, if, if something isn't right to him, he kind of lets you know. And he's up to 13 points with the 23 boards. What a night for Chris Kumaji. And the Bluecoats lead by 20 in this one on DETV and Twitch. As doctors, nurses, and caregivers, and as neighbors and friends, Christiana Care is a partner in everyone's journey to greater health and well-being. Why do they do it? For the love of health. Visit ChristianaCare.org. Well, D, I don't know if the Blue Coats uh, expected to be up 20 right now, but Chris Kumaji's had a lot to do with it, and he punches it in. Wow, that's a double clutch dunk for Zaire Smith. I think some people not sure what they saw with their, you know, in live speed. Double clutch and finish. 12 in a, points. In a game with, with traffic. I wasn't sure he was going to get there, but I forgot the guy floats, and he did. Thought he might have to lay it up, but I'll, he I'll double clutch you, with ease. I, I, I would enjoy seeing him participate in the dunk contest. I think that wrist seems to be all right, too. Yeah. He checks out with 12 points on 6 of 10 right, shooting. Let's, let's see this. Come flying. Come floating. Here we go, Zayat. Look at it. And he takes off right inside. I think he was a little too far out for the right-handed tomahawk, but it still looked pretty. Windy City comes away after the defense on Kumaji, but the Blue Coats get it right back. Having fun in this second half, Robinson, 19 points. And with Kamaji there, you know, the defender didn't know who to commit to and ends up committing to nobody. The lob in for Shitu, Washburn and Robinson were in the area. Yeah, one of them came over the back. Let's see, I'm going to guess... That is Washburn. Robinson was trying to box out. Again, a 12-point lead for Delaware at halftime, 52-40. They were outscored 32-30 in the third, but another 30-point quarter, 31-17, they lead in the fourth, and yeah, they're so way up. Uh, offensively, it's, and they've shared the ball well. They have 25 assists on their 44 made field goals. Their turnovers were big early on. They have taken better care. They have seven total in the second half. Shitu staying with it twice. And another foul. It'll be the fourth on Delaware of the quarter. So we'll take a peek. And, I mean, Mario's holding his arm. But you kind of say who wrapped up who first. <laughs> These teams with Shitu at the line, they'll meet again at Windy City on March 25th, the second to last game of the regular season for Delaware. Every game's going to be important for them. 19 and 18 right now. And going to improve to 20 and 18. Came in as the seventh seed in the East. Six teams make the playoffs. One game back of Capital City. 
Shayok hits 21 points in the game. Who, oh, by the way, Capital City is their opponent on Monday on the road for right. the Blue Coats. And the ones that you're playing with teams that are right in front of you, you know, that those are big swings one way sure. or the other. Split so far, 1-1. Both of those games against Capital City here. The win was the Jonah Bolden put back dunk to win the game. Shayok fades and knocks another one down. He's got 23 on his average. And I like it. There's five guys in double figures for the Blue Coats, including Kamaji, who has that 13 and 24 boards double double. Look, said man. that so casually. 13 <laughs> and 24 double double. That is ridiculous from Chris Kumaji. And how about how well, as a group, they shot the three ball? I mean, 15 of 32. That's outstanding. Munford can't hit in close. Simon on the feed from Callendrette for two. That was a nice bounce pass. Simon, the 23-year-old who finished at St. John's for two years, started at the University of Arizona where he was a teammate of former blue coat Ryan Anderson. Munford steps in and cans a triple. Wow. Munford these last couple, I would say the last three, really on a roll from a scoring perspective. And he still always runs the show well. I mean, he has six assists. Got the start tonight. She two over Clifford. Windy City will be in action next on Wednesday. They'll play four of their next five at home. They'll host Raptors 905 for an early game, 11 a.m. Central time in that one. Shayok, another mid-range jumper. He's got 25 to lead the Blue Coats. And that was one of the things Coach Landon was talking about, you know, developing to run to those three-point spots. That was a long two. Generally speaking, you want to make sure you're behind the arc. The Blue Coats are actually near the top of the league in percentage of points from the mid-range. And, and Shayok actually takes a lot of mid-range jumpers. He but does. He gets buckets, and he got buckets tonight. 25 points for him, and they'll run the clock out. The Blue Coats are going to improve to 20 and 18 with a 23-point victory over the Windy City Bulls, who fall to 16 and 23. The Blue Coats back home and in the win column, snapping a four-game losing skid. 122-99, Blue Coats. Well, one of the things, Matt, I'm just going to tell you, they did it with their defense. They held their opponent to 41% shooting, did a really good job of defending the three-point line, and then they shoot 55 and 48% from three. Just that combination of defense first that led to good offense. And let's quickly get into our specialist of the game. We've got to look to Chris Kumaji here. 13 really? points, <laughs> a season high, 24 rebounds. 